Um, so here what I'm, I'm planning to talk about is a, uh, a brand new resource that VMware's been working on. Um, and, and disclaimer, since my information's at the, at the end of the slide, I do work for VMware. Um, so this is something that we've been working on um, because we know that our story around configuration management and vSphere, you know, really isn't the greatest, you know, to put it lightly. Um, and we've had such great adoption from the PowerShell community and, and everybody that's really embraced PowerCLI. Um, they're, they're really kind of teaming up and, and creating some DSC resources seem like really the logical next step. Uh, and so that's, that's what I'm here to present on, you know, the, this first iteration, our first jump into uh, managing, uh, you know, vSphere environments with DSC resources. Uh, so my name's Kyle Ruddy. Uh, I'll cover a little bit more about me much later. A uh, little bit about what I'm going to be talking about, doing a little bit of a level set on configuration management. I'll scream through that pretty quickly. Uh, same thing for DSC. Um, is anybody in the room? Like, this is a circle of trust, so, you know, feel free to admit, you know, anything that you might not have been willing to earlier, but anybody new to DSC? All right, cool. Okay, so I, I won't go as fast through the DSC part. Um, but then we get into the, into, uh, you know, Demos. I've got some really good demos. Okay, so configuration management and why it really matters. You know, this is something that, that really kind of changes the concept in the way that you do things. You know, when you're in, when you're in PowerShell, when you're in your terminal, you're, you're doing something step by step by step by step versus configuration management where now you're managing a system with a configuration file. You're, you're saying that this is the state that I want this system to be in. You know, you don't need to really worry about the steps that, that's, you know, required in order to make that happen. Um, and this is also really nice because it, it changes things. So it, it kind of forces you to manage your environment through code. You know, so this simplifies everything so that, you know, if you, if you have one server in this configuration, you can configure the second, third, fourth, hundredth in the exact same way and have the exact same output at the end. Uh, plus, you know, source control, really nice. Uh, something that if you're not doing today, you should definitely look into uh, and get started. Uh, a, a really quick breakdown on kind of how this works. So we have our node, um, I'll call it a VM in this case, then we have our configuration file. A configuration file is something that's essentially plain text. You know, it's either a JSON format, YAML, uh, a couple other things that are running out there in the wild, but that is what you're telling that node you know, that, that's the configuration for that node. Then you have some kind of point of control or, you know, really the, the service that, that runs everything that makes sure that that node, that system is following that configuration. Hopefully there's a repository involved somewhere along in there that the configuration is going to live in and your central server, your point of control uh, is going to have access to that. Then, depending upon which configuration management tool you're using, that central point of control is going to establish a link back to your node and send across that configuration file. You know, in, in the case of like DSC, we're talking WinRM. If we're talking Ansible, that's something like uh, SSH. Um, some of the other ones have their own agents uh, that run on them. But once the node has that configuration file, there's generally some sort of piece of software that's running on the node that can then establish some of these configurations, like firewall rules and NTP. Uh, but it goes much further than that. We get into the point of, you know, creating, uh, uh, you know, installing software, uh, databases and application stacks. Oh, animation mess up. There we go. So here are some of the ones that, that are commonly used, and I'll, I'll get to, uh, I have a demo about why these kind of matter. Uh, here at the end. Uh, but a lot of times uh, what I'm hearing is Ansible, Shep, Puppet, uh, Salt Stack is relatively new, and then of course I'm a big PowerShell fan, uh, so PowerShell DSC. Uh, really high level overview, uh, of which I did not change the Ansible back to Puppet, or uh, sorry, to Python. Uh, but basically they all have their own languages that, that the underlying, um, the, the configuration management software is using. Uh, they all have their different pieces of infrastructure to either pull or push those configuration files to those nodes. Um, they all have different terminologies for their, their central point of control, their, those central servers. Um, in one, in, uh, in the case of, uh, DSC, they're, they're using Azure Automation, 
um, as well as your standard pull server. Um, for our purposes, they go by configurations and resources. Um, and then, in general, they're all sequential-based, uh, minus Puppet, which can kind of do uh, whatever it wants. All right, so let's get into DSC itself. Um, and, and one thing that I want to point out, you know, as I talk about source control and, uh, you know, going out there on GitHub, uh, this is one of the community-based logos uh, that they're trying to create for DSC. There's a whole slew of them. Like, I think there's six, seven, eight, something like that that are out there. Uh, and it's up for vote. You know, so if, if you see this and you're like, I don't like that, go out there and vote. You know, help, uh, help improve and, and, you know, really create the logo for, for DSC as it goes forward. Uh, so how DSC ends up working, so we have our configuration file. This is your standard PowerShell script, uh, PS1 extension. Uh, when you run that, you're gonna compile it and those create MOFs. Uh, managed object format, I believe. Uh, and then each one of those MOFs is what's sent off to the nodes. And then on each one of those nodes, there's something that's known as an LCM, or Local Configuration Manager. That's the piece of software that takes that configuration and produces all the results uh, to, to make that end result happen. So since I said that that's a PS1, you know, here's an example configuration file. You know, in this case, we're naming our configuration my DSC configuration. Uh, let's see if my... Oh, that is not good. Where'd he go? There we go. Yeah, it's too dark. Uh, so we have, then we list out our nodes. So when I mentioned earlier, you can do this against a single server or up to like 100 or hundreds of servers. You know, that's just the declaration there on the third line. So we're, in this case, we're saying this DSC configuration will be applied against our local host as well as server 01. And within that, we want two services to be present uh, or installed and enabled. Uh, in this case, uh, RSAT and BitLocker. And then at the bottom, this is where our uh, compilation happens so that, that it can create the MOF files. I'm assuming everybody in here knows what PowerCLI is, uh, but if you had no idea, this is VMware's set of modules that allows us to manage uh, and interact with and automate VMware products. Uh, with our latest release, which is 11.2, we are now up above 700 different commandlets, uh, and we are managing pretty much all of the products that are out there and available. Uh, anything from, you know, NSX to auto deploy to vCenter to, I mean, everything. All right, so let's get into the resources themselves, uh, since I screened through that, the prior part. Uh, so this was originally, uh, an intern project. This was something that, uh, that was kind of the brainchild of uh, our product manager, Jake Robinson, as well as our, uh, our, one of our engineering managers, Common. And, uh, you know, they really just came to this conclusion that, that this is where we needed to be. You know, instead of looking at resources for, for all these other products, we could just embrace DSC and kind of cover, cover everything. Um, so we brought an intern on board. He's fantastic. Um, Simeon is his name. Uh, and if you look at the GitHub repo, uh, we actually hired him full time. Uh, so he's out there, uh, you know, reviewing pull requests, creating pull requests, all kinds of stuff. Um, oh, so the point to this, this was one of the posters that was actually created by the intern to kind of present this internally to VMware to kind of say, you know, hey, this is something that we're doing for vCenter. We already have all of these other modules. You know, hey, it'd be great if you guys threw some some engineering effort behind this uh, as well to you know help us turn these out faster. Uh, so the DSC resource project itself was released in December of 2018, uh, literally the week before Christmas. So it was it was a legitimate Christmas gift to me because I'd been sitting on it for about six months before uh, I could really talk about it. Um, and currently, it works against vCenter servers as well as ESXi hosts. Um, as I mentioned before, it is open sourced. Uh, this is important because this is the first part of PowerCLI that's ever been open sourced. Like that, that's pretty huge if you've been paying attention to PowerCLI for the last like 11 years. Like we've never touched open source before, so this is, this is pretty tremendous. Um, so it's out there on GitHub. It's under the official VMware GitHub because uh, we've heard that there were some issues with, with people not running. Uh, things that were that were outside of the you know company proper GitHub repo. Uh, a couple dependencies uh, because we are using classes, uh, we need to 
to have you on at least PowerShell 5.1 uh, for the system that's running the LCM. Uh, and you also need to have at least PowerCLI 10.1.1. Um, you know, we always recommend being on the latest and greatest, but uh, 1011 is, is as far back as you can go. Um, you also need to have the ability to run PowerShell as an administrator. Um, and then, you know, that, that LCM, the proxy node that I'll talk about in the next slide, uh, also needs to have both PowerCLI as well as the vSphere DSC uh, module resource. Um, so this is going to work a little bit differently um, in the way that uh, DSC is going to, to process and operate against vCenter and ESXi. So we have our configuration file. You know, that's very, something very similar to what we saw before. That's going to what be is what, you know, you put all your configurations in, all the things that you're trying to manage. Um, your, your MOF file, you know, after it's compiled, is going to run on a proxy box. You know, because we, we still need a Windows operating system. Um, and, you know, that's where PowerShell and PowerCLI are going to, to live as well. Uh, then every time your, uh, the, the DSC process kicks off, you're going to see, you know, a connection through PowerCLI because everything is using PowerCLI underneath the covers. So you're going to see those tasks pop up in your vCenter server, you know, when things are being configured or, or changed. Uh, you're going to see those sessions created, you know, when, when this is running because it has to establish that. And it's all going to look like your standard power CLI traffic. Uh, so here's a sample configuration file. Uh, so, you know, one looks exactly like the same one. Uh, number two up there is the second line. That's going to be where you import uh, the DSC resource itself. Uh, we're going to be using localhost just because I'm running everything directly on the proxy uh, system itself. Uh, we have some configuration around your passwords and credentials, uh, you know, best practices, state to, to use certificate encrypted um, uh, passwords, but that seems a little overly complex for uh, the majority of the times that I present this. Uh, and then we get into the resources themselves. Uh, so the resource that I'm showing here is VM host NTP settings, which is going to do exactly like it sounds. Um, so we have our, our connection settings, um, the separation here, so the name, that's going to be the, the system that it's actually applying the configuration to. So if you're connecting to, say, a vCenter server, that's going to be the server. If you're applying VM host um, modifications uh, or configurations, that's going to be what's put underneath the name. Now, you can connect directly to an ESXi host as well, totally your call, um, but, you know, that is an option. Uh, and then you have the, the credential uh, that are being passed as well. Then there's the NTP server um, and NTP service policy. Then down at the bottom, that's just the, the generation for, for the MOF file. So what we cover today, um, and, and literally when I say today, I mean that's because it's changed three times this week. Uh, so we, we had three accepted pull requests this week. Um, the, the brand new stuff is clusters, so we can now uh, create clusters and uh, manage high availability and distributed resource uh, settings. Uh, the other one that didn't make it onto this slide because I think it was approved this morning uh, is the creation of a data center. Uh, so we can also now uh, make sure that your configuration is li in line with that. Uh, then we have stuff like statistics, login levels, um, NTP, DNS on the VM host side, uh, we had a lot of help from um, PowerShell community member Luke Deakins, uh, who I'm sure you all are, are well uh, acquainted with on the PowerCLI side. Um, he did a lot of help and a, a, a massive amount of work on the standard switch um, resource that was released. Uh, and then we can even do things that, that can control PowerCLI itself. Yeah, so if you've ever, you know, installed PowerCLI, received a, an error message, you know, if you're using invalid certificates, you can now uh, ensure that that setting is, is uh, set on your local system as well. Uh, all right, so let's, let's move into demo time, because I feel like I've talked for a long time. Where is my cursor? Let me end this. All right, here we go. So this is the the this nested lab that I'm I'm using. 
Um, the hosts are just there so that I can connect to them and, and do some configurations. Uh, because when, when I mentioned the, the cluster portion earlier, I mean, that is legitimately creating cluster and making those modifications to the HA and DRS settings. Like there's no add host or ensure host is present uh, yet. Uh, so that's how that looks. Uh, let me run my report here. So what we're going to be doing is, is going through uh, making some changes to the logging level, um, to the tasks, um, changing some st statistics, creating a data center, creating a cluster, uh, creating a bunch of folders, uh, and modifying some NTP uh, and DNS configuration, as well as creating a standard switch. So let's head over to my proxy node here. Uh, so this, we have our configuration here, uh, starting to use a little bit of PowerShell trickery here. Um, so uh, in, in the case that you're configuring um, or using this against multiple vCenters, um, I'm using uh, an array here and then calling out, you know, server name, user, you know, password. Of course, you don't want that plain text, but, you know, for the purpose of this. Uh, I'm also giving it an array of VM folders folder names as well as VM hosts. Um, this is something that, that you know, I, I'm also looking for feedback because, uh, you know, I would like to very much dynamically generate those instead of, you know, putting those in there manually. Um, so that's something that we're still working on. Uh, then we go down a little bit. This is our actual configuration. So the configuration is going to be called uh, vCenter config. We have our import right here. Uh, everything's going to be running on our local host, so that's why that's there. And then we're running a for each loop. Uh, so again, you know, because that vCenter in our all nodes uh, is set up as an array, we have our connection criteria up here. Uh, we have our first resource setting uh, here. This is the vCenter settings. So this is where we're going to be changing the logging level um, as well as some of the particulars from events and tasks, as well as configuring the, uh, the message of the day. And we have our statistics, kind of just making some changes here to the period length and level. Uh, then we have our data center resource. So we're going to be creating a data center that's named psconfu. Uh, the name string that's here. Uh, there is a location that you can also provide. So that means, you know, if you put your data centers within a folder, you can, this is where you can configure that. Then we have our cluster. You know, so we're ensuring that it's present. We want it in the root. Uh, with, that is also in the root of our data center. We want it in that data center that we just created. We're going to name it psconfu. Uh, then we're going to apply some some HA settings, you know, basically turning turning it on and accepting some defaults. Uh, same thing for DRS, you know, making sure that that's enabled um, and configuring some defaults there. Uh, the one thing that we are configuring here as well is using the uh, built into DSC that depends on. So we're saying, you know, this relies on this other thing existing. Uh, so that's something that you might get a, a little familiar with. Um, especially as you get to the point of um, folders, which is which is up next. Uh, since we're doing another for each loop that runs around those those three top level folders uh, for development, production, and management, uh, you know we're we're just going to create those folders. Yep. So name being the folder itself, uh, it has a depends on of being psconfu uh, as the data center that exists. You can also create uh, other folder types like storage or, or network, uh, host folders as well. Uh, so then once we have that top level folder created, then we're going to create some nested folders. So in this case, it's going to be a Windows folder. Uh, you know, and, and the location is updated to be that folder, you know, that, that top level folder that we're discussing. And that also depends on that top level folder existing as well. You know, same thing for the Linux folder. So we're we're creating Windows and Linux folders underneath these. Uh, and then now that we're outside of this loop, and now that we've created our management folder, 
We're also going to create one uh, that's called VMware. So that's the, the folder resource. Then we get into our VM host settings. You know, this is another, another loop since we're applying this against two of the hosts that are in there, uh, making modifications to our NTP settings. Uh, and I believe we're just establishing uh, that these are correct for the DNS. And then here's our, our standard switch, just naming it VSS underscore PSCOMVU. Then down here at the bottom, Run it, you compile it, and you make it so. So let's pop this up. That'll take just a second. And so there we have our, our MOF file that's here and created. And then we can do start DSC resource. Or no, start DSC configuration. Point it to the folder that our moth is living in. I'm going to do a force as well as a weight. Uh, force is just a, you know, if, if a prior DSC configuration is, is running, uh, this will, you know, basically run on, run right over it. Uh, and then a weight because when you first run start DSC configuration, it creates a job. Uh, but I don't, I don't want to just receive back the job. I want to see everything as it's happening. So the first time you run it, it'll take a little bit because it's, it's going to go through some, some preparatory steps. Uh, and then afterwards, we'll start to see some stuff running. So let's go back to our vCenter server here. Pop up our tasks. There we go. So now it's, it's into the applying configuration step. Oops. There we go. So we, we could see the, the first task started here. You know, we're creating a data center, creating the cluster, and we're reconfiguring the cluster because we're turning on HA and DRS, and we start creating some folders. You know, and this is running as the vSphere uh, administrator at vSphere.local, like I configured it to. Uh, so, you know, keep that in mind when, when you're setting this up in your environment, because if you put it as you and then it does some crazy stuff, it's going to look like you did it, uh, even though you may or may not have been involved whatsoever. So we've moved past the production folders. We're on to development. And I believe management was first. Nope, there it goes. Okay, and there it goes with the, with the update network configuration. So that is almost complete. So let's, uh, let's go walk through the, the GitHub repo here for a little bit while that finishes up. Um, so out there we have, um, there, there will be a link to this in, in the PowerPoint deck uh, here later. Uh, but so we have documentation. This was a, a really big thing um, that we wanted to focus on. Uh, so cluster. You know, if you go back to that cluster resource that I configured, it has all those parameters that are in there. Um, so there's a, a markdown file that's out here that you can read through, you know, indicating everything uh, that's out there, um, you know, what it can or, or should be set to, uh, you know, whether or not it's Boolean, you know, true, false, or integer based, uh, and so on and so forth. And that exists for all of the resources. That is one of the requirements. Uh, of going through and actually creating a pull request has to have that uh, and some unit testing, some pester tests. Then we have our classes. You know, and, and you know, underneath the covers, you know, this right here, you know, it's literally doing a get view and pulling out a VM host extension data, pointing all the way through to the network system. You know, so this is legitimately you know, direct power CLI calls underneath the cover. Uh, let's see, the other ones, the resources. So here are all the resources that we have. Um, several of these, you know, this one was added, cluster was updated three days ago. 
Data center folder was updated just yesterday. That was the pull request from yesterday. Uh, let's see. Yeah, get data center. You know, again, direct power CLI calls. So if, if you see something that doesn't work, you know, there's a really good chance that you can dig in the code a little bit and see exactly what's happening. All right, so let's go back to our, our configuration being applied here. If we go back to our proxy node, we should see. Uh, so that's all, that's all set up now. We can do a test DSC configuration. Actually, that's going to run through the whole thing again. Uh, so let's just do our script. You know, so this is the script that I ran earlier uh, that you all were able to see. And then we can run that exact same thing again and see all the differences. You know, so if we start off at the top, our logging level changed from info to warning. Uh, max age enabled and, and for tasks are both default or uh, uh, set to false. We have our message of the day now being populated with hello PSConfU from DSC. Uh, we can see that our statistics level for the vCenter changed. Uh, we now have a new data center of PSConfU. Uh, we also have that cluster. We can notice that both HA uh, as well as DRS are enabled. We have gone from just the single folder that's you know, discovered virtual machine. Uh, we have all you know those top level as well as those nested Linux and Windows uh, folders as well as the the VMware one that's nested in management. Our NTP settings have changed for just the first and second host, because that's what, what I configured it to do. Uh, so it went from a local IP address, uh, this .10, to being, going out and looking at pool.ntp.org. Uh, and then for the bottom ones, uh, uh, DNS, yeah, DNS didn't change, so that was just a, a validate. And then we can see on the first two hosts as well, we now have a virtual standard switch called VSS. PSConf EU. And then if we go back to our test here, oh look, there's something that's actually in a non-desired state. That's interesting. Uh, anyways, while that's running, let me toss up the PowerPoint again. Okay, so that was the, the resources in action, um, at least a handful of them. Uh, there's been one major known issue that's come up so far, um, and, and that was uh, finding a, an error for max envelope size. Um, that was not something that we'd encountered before, and that was something that, you know, as soon as we added uh, some of the new stuff, uh, that popped up. Uh, shout out to the to the SharePoint DSC folks for for not only already having it open as an issue, but also having this as a solution. Um, so increasing the the value to 2048 uh, fixed fixed the solution. In, in our case, um, apparently that can go up to to five to five megs. Uh, so kind of a cool thing. Uh, so one more thing that that I wanted to talk about. Uh, before opening it up for for questions, um, and, and this is something that that I think come, you know, doesn't come up as often as it should. Um, so this is a slide uh, from from Michael Green uh, at the the uh, the PowerShell and DevOps Summit US. Um, and you know, the the important part here is you know the original goal of DSC was to provide a configuration as code platform, um, and you know, you shouldn't have to reinvent all of these resources for every single solution. You know, listing out Chef, Puppet, Ansible, Salt, uh, you know, some of those ones that I mentioned earlier. Um, so a, a really cool thing is, is that all of these items um, have their own, you know, module or resource or capability of talking to DSC resources. So even if you're using one of these today, you can still make use of the you know, the, the DSC resources that, that PowerCLI has created. Because uh, I, I know there's all kinds of issues with, with some of the uh, some of the modules and 
um, and other resources that are out there. So let's take a look at that. Let's see, is my other session open? Nope. Let me jump into this other environment. And let me show you what a what an Ansible uh, example looks like. Um, so here's a, a look at what a YAML file looks like, and I'm sorry, that, that's a little more washed out than I thought it would have been. Um, but so, so the key points here are, here along the top, this is listing out our host. So this is that LCM, that, that proxy node that I was talking about before. Uh, and then we're calling the Ansible WinDSC module. And then as part of that module, we're calling the vCenter statistics resource. You know, so if you wanted it to be, you know, NTP settings, that's VM host, uh, NTP. Um, then we have our, our server name. So in this case, we're connecting to uh, our vCenter server. We're using a, a domain account here uh, called DSC, uh, just a service account. You know, plain text password, because I didn't want to get into Ansible Vault. Um, and then we're just making a, a slight modification, um, or technically this is already running, so we're, we're just um, applying a configuration to establish a baseline uh, for these configuration settings themselves. So then we can just run ansible-playbook and then call our dsc underscore ansible yaml file. And so then, you know, if, if you're familiar with Ansible, this will look just like every other playbook that, that you generally run. Uh, you'll see some tasks. So, you know, the first one, we're establishing a connection to our DSC master. Uh, and then after that, it's going to actually check against those statistic settings. Uh, since this one's already running, it should probably come back all, all good and all tests should pass. taking a little longer than I would have hoped, but uh, while that's running, let me show you where uh, we also have those configuration files uh, in the GitHub repo uh, and as part of the DSC resource itself. So there's a folder that's called configurations. In this configuration, we have folders set up for Ansible, Chef, uh, obviously PowerShell, uh, as well as Puppet. So in the Ansible folder, uh, you know, we have a general readme on, you know, kind of how to get started in case you're not already using it. Uh, and then we have a uh, example uh, config file. Uh, so, you know, that's what it looks like for Ansible. Uh, Puppet had a session yesterday, so this is how it would look like if you were, you were doing this against uh, with a Puppet server. You know, so, so you're not exactly locked in just to using DSC. DSC is, is something that can, can accompany your already existing configuration management solutions. Oh, no, and I did have something changed. Um, so it went out, it made that change, gives us a, a little yellow icon down here at the bottom, some text, uh, and then it says we're all set. So let's go back to our original one since this is done. Let's see our resources not in desired state. All right, so what did we not apply here? Uh, we did not apply one of the vCenter settings. Interesting. I bet that was message of the day, even though that came through fine. Uh, so then here the, the playbook just ran through again. This time it finds no changes. Everything was okay. You know, and, and when it says two right there, that's, you know, both of these tasks. Okay. So in summary, 
Uh, personally, configuration management is, is something that I think can make your life easier. You know, making these changes um, in how you manage your environment um, is something that has a lot of power um, and it has a lot of capabilities to, you know, because it's right there in text, you can extend that out to other members of your team. You know, they don't have to be PowerShell masters uh, anymore. You know, if you can read a text file and, and interpret it, you're, you're pretty good. Um, there are some new DSC resources that I showed off, you know, brand new since December. Um, I, I didn't show how many pull requests that we have, but I think we're up to, to 71 pull requests, which is um, pretty mind-blowing for something that's so new. Um, these are out there on, on GitHub. You know, if you have feature requests, if you have um, problems with it, open up an issue. Um, you know, we've been extremely proactive on, on dealing with those. Um, I, I think our... Uh, our SLA is two business days of, of response time, but you know, Luke Deacons is out there. There's a couple other community folks that are out there as well that are more than happy to. Um, and, and this is also something that, that's really powerful because you know, even if you're using something else today, you can add these in and, and really streamline that whole process. Uh, so my slides and demo code will be up, uploaded to uh, the PSConf EU uh, GitHub. Uh, so at that point, I will leave it on my, my overview, and if anybody has questions, wow. Okay, um, let's start over here. We'll, we'll work our way this way. Um, so host profiles, that's, that's a fun one. Um, Oh, yes, 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 yes. Um, so the question is, how does this uh, work kind of, you know, in, in tandem or uh, in relation with host profiles? Um, and, you know, host profiles, you know, speaking as a, a former customer, they're, they're not great. Um, they're, they're very difficult to manage. Um, it, it's one of those things, you know, but once, it, once they're working, they're great. Um, but, but ultimately, um, this, uh, if you can manage it with PowerCLI today, uh, there's a chance that, that these will be able to work in conjunction with those host profiles. Uh, but in the end, uh, you know, there's a really good chance that this could um, remove your need or requirement to use host profiles. Um, you know, that's, that, that was definitely one of the things that, uh, that has kind of held up the release was that, you know, okay, so, so you can do stuff with this, and this is free. Like, if as long as your ESXi host is is licensed, like, so as long as you can connect PowerCLI to it, this is going to work. Versus host profiles, which is you know enterprise plus licensed, uh, and not everybody uses it. Um, you know, so so that that was that was a big discussion. So in theory, you know, th this is this opens you up to choice to whatever you would like to do. Uh, if you love host profiles, you're more than happy to stick with them. Otherwise. This thing. Um, so that that's another thing that uh, that we're not really quite certain how to go, and and not just a not just a conversion tool, um, but really how do we connect to your your current system and, and pull that out and turn that into DSC resource or DSC configurations? You know, so so that's also one of the big things um, that we're trying to figure out. You know, so. If, Sorry? Have you looked at reverse DSC? Uh, I don't believe we have. Reverse DSC. I'm making, making a mental note of that. Okay. I wouldn't recommend to our company to do it, but it's a good way to extract information if you want. Okay. Okay, so even though, you know, the, to follow that up, that the, uh, the, the comment was, you know, take a look at reverse DSC. Um, it, it may not have been the greatest success story, but still something to, to check out and, and at least, you know, see how it works. Uh, and then go over here. Uh, so the question is around how, it, so I, I showed the demonstration where I created that folder structure. Now that we have the folder structure there and available, how do we populate that? Uh, and to be honest right now, we don't have, have a way. Uh, you know, similarly to, to why those hosts were just kind of hanging out in their own, own, uh, uh, data center, 
Uh, we haven't created the, the capability of adding or moving VMs. Uh, we haven't yet created the ability to, to move the hosts in, into clusters or, or even really you know, move hosts in, into, uh, into folders. Um, so that's something that, that is very much still a work in progress. Yes, correct. Creating VMs. Uh, 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 so the question is, you know, is there anything for creating VMs? And today, not yet. Uh, it, definitely on the roadmap. Yeah, it basically, like, I, let me clarify this. If, if you can do it in PowerCLI, it's on the roadmap. Like, we, we want to get there. Uh, we, we want to, you know, fully be able to, to make sure that, you know, if you can do it in one place, you can do it in both. And, and once you can do it in both, you can use it on whatever tool you want to. Uh, so that's the end goal. Yes. So the question is around um, using configuration management with the VMs at the VM object level. You know, so if you think about it, you know, if you have a VM that's been around for a long time, say it was deployed using, uh, you know, server 2008 R2, and then you upgraded it to server 2012, and maybe even then, you know, server 2016. You know, the the underlying, the the driver profile, the hardware profile, all of these things, um, you know, have the potential to change. Um, and, and to, to answer that, uh, we don't really have a good plan for that right now. Um, we don't have the capability of doing that yet. Um, and, and that's kind of the, one of the things is that we don't know how to do that, uh, responsibly. Um, so, you know, if you have feelings on that, if you have thoughts, you know, that's definitely something that, that you're more than welcome to, to share with me because, you know, you know, this is literally like, really the first time that, that I've been able to talk about it in, in public and especially at a conference. Um, so, so this is kind of our first foray. So feedback is very much welcome and, and appreciated. Yes. How do we influence um, uh, the priority of the project? How can we tell you what we want as customers? Uh, issues. Oh, uh, so, the, so the question is how can we influence um, where this project kind of goes um, and what the priority list is, and, and the response to that is opening up issues. You know, create an issue. Um, you know, you can also you know create threads on Twitter. You can create threads in in the PowerShell Slack. Um, you know, the more that we see the, this stuff mentioned, the more priority that it's going to get. Uh, so you know, involvement is definitely going to be a key thing. So, so the question is around the, the authentication uh, mannerisms there. Oh, let me end show so I can show you how we did that. Uh, so here at the bottom, this is we'll just use the, the standard switch resource as an example. Um, so we have the, the name parameter. That's going to be the ESXi host. Uh, and then we have the server parameter. So the server parameter is what you're connecting to. Uh, so in, in the situation of this, we were running this against a single vCenter server. So the server is going to be your vCenter server, and the name is going to be your host. And, and you know, vice versa, if you only want to run this directly against host, you know, put your server as, as your VM host. Uh, and then you can apply that as well. Uh, but you just have to, you know, you know, reminder that, you know, that has a, a different um, authentication. You know, so you're either going to have to give it root creds or, you know, whatever credentials you have set up on it. Yep, so that's, that's another, so the, the question or, or the, um, the, the response was around adding a host to a vCenter server. Um, and, and that's another thing that, that we haven't quite figured out how to make, uh, how to responsibly do that. 
um, be, because, you know, as you mentioned, that takes two different pieces of credentials, you know, because you need to have that ability to authenticate to your vCenter server, as well as being able to authenticate to the VM host, uh, and tell them that they now need to talk together. Um, so that's something that we are trying to wrap our heads around. Uh, yes, way in the back. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so the question is around, um, you know, applying these settings and uh, doing it in a way that, that doesn't mess up your system. Um, and, and that's going to be a use case of where, you know, having a lab, having a, a, a test environment, um, is, is going to be probably the response. Um, I, I certainly wouldn't expect everybody here to go back to their system and run something like this that creates all of these things, because uh, you know, that could put some shock into your, your fellow admins and management teams, and if you have any uh, you know, like VCheck uh, reports that are running or anything like that, they're gonna freak out when you're like, whoa, look at all, you know, look at all these new folders and look at these you know, different uh, NTP servers that have been configured. You know, that's gonna be a little bit of a shell shock. Um, so I, you know, I, I would find a test environment to use. Um, one of the things that, that we're working on um, is, uh, so, so if you didn't know, uh, the, the VMware hands-on labs pretty much every one of those labs have PowerCLI installed. You know, so you can, if you don't have your own lab to work with, you can log into one of those, it's free. Uh, I think you do have to register and, and give them an email address, but you know, once you're logged in, you can run any of those labs for, for like three hours at a time. Um, and, and you can go in, mess up that system. If you get it to the point where it doesn't work anymore, hit redeploy. Um, but then uh, we're, we're trying to get it to where there's internet access. So basically having the ability to, uh, you know, we, we've been providing pretty rapid changes uh, to, the, to these sets of resources. So having some way to use those hands-on labs to download so then you have a lab environment to work with. Uh, but that, that would be my, my recommendation. Yeah. Any other questions? Oh my, uh, I saw your hand up first. Uh, so the question is around release cycle. Uh, currently, no. Uh, let me see. I don't even know if we have... Uh, where is the version release? Yeah. Yeah, currently we, we have nothing. It's, it's pretty much been rapid fire. So we have our, our version 1.0. Uh, that was the one that was released in December. Um, I, don't, I don't believe that we're ready to kind of maintain or... Um, establish any kind of release cycle at this point. Um, at a certain, uh, at, at one point in time, we were using different branches, but I think that's that's even changed. Yeah, there was a dev and a a test branch, but those apparently have have vanished. Um, you know, like I, I would I would certainly assume. So, like Power CLI, we're running on on pretty much a a quarterly release rate. So I would assume that that this will get to uh, that point as well. Um, so if that's something that you would uh, that you would expect, um, that is good to know. Uh, so the comment is around, you know, publishing it to the gallery and using the uh, the, the preview designation. Yeah, so that you know, even if it's been updated here, you know, at least you have the option of pulling that down uh, from the gallery. I know there were two other questions. Uh, yeah. So, so the, the question is around what happens to the existing resources that are out there. Um, and uh, let's see, go back to that. Uh, actually, let's, I can use the report. Oh, that's not the right one. 
So if we take a look at our, our folders here, uh, you know, the discovered virtual machine folder is out there. That's one of the defaults. Uh, I believe you can remove it, uh, but in this case, it stayed because I didn't specify uh, a configuration for it. You know, if I would have said discovered virtual machine, uh, ensure false, I think it's absent, uh, then it should have disappeared. Correct. Yeah, sorry, that, that's, that was the very direct way of saying yes, that, that things, are not dis, things that are not described will not change. Yeah, so like my, my host settings, you know, ESX 0, 3, and 0, 4, those, did, those were not modified. Yeah, so those were untouched because I, I didn't tell it to do something. Yes? Yeah, so the question is around support. Um, so this is something that I fight with our, our, our GSS or our, our global support services group um, uh, almost on a daily basis. Um, there have been two tickets that were created this week alone around support for PowerCLI. Um, so PowerCLI does, is supported under basic support uh, mechanisms. And when I say that, I mean installation uh, and essentially troubleshooting for individual commands. Um, so for, for the DSC resource at this point in time, uh, it's going to be a direct from the PowerCLI engineering team as well as myself um, and Jake Robinson, the product manager. It, it's going to be basically a, a best effort support uh, from us. And then we are working through the process of, of making sure that it is uh, covered under support. Uh, so, you know, the, the other standard uh, canned answer from our, our lovely GSS folks is, is that, you know, do you have SDK support? If you don't have SDK support, they'll say no. Um, under SDK support, this could even be a little, a little funky, um, but that's, that is something that we're working to resolve. Yes? Yeah, yeah. So actually, that, that's a really good point. Um, so, so the comment was around using the, the VMware communities um, or VMTN. Um, there's also a uh, VMware Code Slack channel. Um, if you go out to, to VMware Code, there's a little join button. Um, it'll ask you for your email address and then and then churn out a Slack invite. Um, and at there, as part of that, there is a, a DSCR for vSphere channel itself um, that's directed, you know, specifically on this. Uh, so, you know, you'll see a couple engineers out there, Luke is there, um, and, and myself and, and some other folks that have been working on this are, are out there and more than happy to answer questions and uh, anything else. Any other questions or comments? Is this something that people would use? Something that they're looking forward to? I see a lot of head nods. Okay, awesome. Uh, well, with that, you know, thank you all very much. Uh, you know, thank you all for, for sticking around until, you know, literally the end of the day. Uh, it's, it's dinner and beer time.